All right, welcome back. Today we're looking at Hamming distance. This is a uh, problem where it's a really simple algorithm comparing two strings of equal length and determining positions in which uh, the corresponding symbols are different. Um, it might not just be a string, it could be actually be an integer. So uh, in a number scenario, you would look at the individual bits that are different. Um, and really any element. So if you have like a three-dimensional object, like in this article here, you might look at, well, at each point, uh, determine the distance between the two, um, or the differences between each of the points and how many points are different. So uh, that's kind of that. It's a relatively simple algorithm. Um, what we are going to look at specifically is a couple of useful Rust APIs. Uh, when iterating over characters. So uh, let's just kind of do that. And I'll show you two different ways to just kind of make it easier. Um, so the first way here, well, so the main thing is if the distances are not equal at all, uh, we're just going to return none. Uh, then we get into the bulk of the algorithm. So we're going to look at the characters. one and then s2 chars right so both of those are iterators and then we need a mutable distance which is going to be u size and now what i want to show you is an iterator function called zip uh, zip will return a new iterator that will iterate over two iterators. So you can take one iterator and zip it with another iterator. And now on each iteration, you have uh, each of the elements. Uh, so it's pretty handy utility, it's pretty commonly used. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. What you get is a tuple, so you want a two. And we're going to say s1 chars dot zip s2 chars. Right, so now we have both elements and uh, each of the characters. So we're just going to do something really simple where we say if e1 not equal to e2 distance 1. And finally, we'll just turn that distance. Right, really straightforward. Not a whole lot to it. There are easier ways, uh, shorter ways to implement this. So that passes. Uh, now I'm going to show you the. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way to implement this. Um, so here I'm doing e1, e2. These are just characters. Uh, if these were numbers, you could use the uh, ZOR operation. And if you're, look, if you're familiar with bitwise operations, an AND, one and one is one, or one or zero, one. A ZOR, right? Bitwise ZOR performs an exclusive disjunction, which is equivalent to adding two bits and discarding the carry. The result is zero only when we have two zeros or two ones. So uh, if they are the same, we want them, if each of the bits are the same, we would get a zero. Uh, so that's kind of what that would do. But that's kind of, that's you don't really need that for this type of problem. Uh, let's go ahead and write this in a shorter syntax. So uh, we can actually get rid of this whole loop and make it a little bit more functional. So let's do that. S1 chars. Remember that zip function. Right? So we're going to say dot zip. And then we do s2 dot chars. And uh, at this point, what I want to do is actually map each of the elements to a 1 if there's a difference or zero if there's no difference. So e1, e2, 
and we're going to say if e1 not equal to e2, e1 else 0. All right, so now that we have a number, I'm going to say sum. So let's get rid of all this. Oops, forgot our closure here. So now we have a closure, and now I'm just going to say sum of those values. And I'll say sum, because it's an option. And there we go. That is the alternative implementation. Right. So yeah, uh, just a couple basic functions here. Zip, handy little utility, uh, taking from one iterator uh, and iterating over two simultaneous uh, arrays, getting each of the elements. Uh, zip's commonly used for all sorts of type of these type of problems where you need to iterate over two uh, arrays or collections. Maybe they're equal length, maybe they're not, uh, and you need to perform some kind of operation simultaneously over each of them. Uh, so it's very handy. It's, it's much easier to do it this way than, let's say, creating a loop, using a length, uh, doing an offset of that length. In this case, uh, if you have a very large uh, collection, uh, maybe even an infinite collection, uh, Rust, if you didn't know this, actually will let you do infinite collections. Um, I didn't know this until recently. Yeah, look at this. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.